Roman here, and this is Things I Learned with E.G. Sumail's Shadow Fiend in 7-Eleven. As of always, I'm here to tell you guys that I'll be playing the Meme Hammer arc board the entire week on my stream, if I'm not casting any games. So make sure to tune in. Remember that there will be an Arcana giveaway at the end of the month, and to participate, all you need to do is watch enough so that you can farm crisps to buy raffle tickets. Also, if you have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe for free, and subscribers, they do earn more crisps over time than normal viewers. I have a ton of Shadow Fiend videos, and if you want to learn laning phase, I feel like they explain quite a bit. This game is pretty long, so we'll start here. I'm a big fan of how Sumail secures CS with the raises, and as he draws aggro from the last creep, instead of waiting to get the CS, he always uses the downtime to harass or zone the enemy. He did this quite a bit during the laning phase, but the real play starts now. You can see how much he pressures fear on DP, And as he commits the double raises, he gets initiated. Notice how he plays this. He has the magic one, but he waits as long as possible to use it. As the stump comes, he kills Bounty Hunter with the short raise and disengages. With the magic one being used at the perfect time, he survives, but he gets glimpsed back. So he learns Requiem of Souls at level 6. While he has no mana, since he bought enough time to cast the medium range raise on Disruptor, the damage plus the soul damage is enough to guarantee Sumail a double kill, while if he just learned souls, he wouldn't actually get any of the souls and he would die and lose souls anyways. At level 6, you can already destroy creep waves with double raises, and that's pretty good against heroes like Bounty Hunter and Disruptor. It's not a good idea for Sumail to pressure the tower this game without vision of those heroes in other lanes, so he just shoves the lane while he farms the easy ancients or jungle camps. What I want to talk about is how Sumail played when he had vision of the other supports. Bounty Hunter shows up here, and while Sumail ends up missing the last raise, look how he plays knowing that there's no Bounty Hunter for some time when Shadow Shaman passes by. He's always harassing fear because he knows how hard it is for DP to farm when he's here. Because of that raise, and the fact that Sumail checks the inventory and knows that his second set of raindrops is in the backpack, as well as Disruptor is moving towards that area yet, so he's not there, they can just burst DP easily. We see that again here. Bounty Hunter is showing up top and Disruptor is bottom. While most Shadow Fiends would raise the wave and farm jungle, as I mentioned, Sumail can farm more going jungle, but if he farms less while harassing DP, he will be more farmed in fear in comparison, just because of how much gold the lane gives in comparison to jungle, even if you can farm it pretty fast. He taunts the raise first, and it's clear he is less interested in farm than he is in denying farm by baiting fear in when he goes for a last hit. If he pushes the wave now, at this stage, fear will get every last hit, and if Sumail tries to push the wave and then pressure as the creeps attack the tower, he risks dying because of glimpse or TPs. Because of Sumail's playstyle, Fear is losing his second set of raindrops and already is very low HP. I know that a lot of people watching are not fans of the Yield Scepter Shadow Fiend. In this game though, the item makes sense for a lot of reasons. There are three cores on the Radiant side that don't want to go BKB, and that Shadow Fiend would have a super hard time killing without BKB. The thing though is that BKB doesn't help against Exorcism or Impetus, while if he goes Yield Scepter, he can pretty much solo kill three of the cores there, provided the Lifestealer already used Rage. He can also dispel Open Wounds, Track, Silence, a voice that is stored down Damage. It gives mana regen for Shadow Fiend, and a lot of Shadow Fiend's farm comes from mana, and it also synergizes with the move speed talent at level 15. It's usually hard to combo with the Yield Scepter before Blink, so the first showing of the item happens as soon as Sumail gets it. Ursa gets engaged here, but Sumail, knowing that he had gold for Blink, doesn't help, especially because Exorcism had been cast already. He ends up getting glimpsed as he wanted to use Death Prophet, but it ends up being good because they kill her without the use, and something people forget sometimes is that the Yield Scepter is a good setup for the triple race combo, and knowing that most Radiant heroes were already already that he can just set up here saving requiem for the next fight This is the type of game though where low level players give a bad name to use Scepter build in my opinion. There's Aesthetic Storm, there's Silence, there's Glimpse, there's Shuriken, a shit ton of ways to cancel his Requiem. So notice that from that play I showed you, Sumail never bothered using it because no one was out of position. He left friends to die here just because trying to go for a counter Requiem with everyone there without BKB not only wouldn't work, it would put him in a terrible spot. This is still 20 minutes in and when he gets his BKB he will have a 100% sure of killing anyone he goes for besides Lifestealer, if he has Rage. And this fight goes to show how many conditions needed to happen so that Requiem is cast easily. Disruptor is dead here, so there's no glimpse and no static storm. Shuriken gets used, and Death Prophet's use gets used. So even if the Requiem is not perfect, there won't be enough time for the cast point of the silence, allowing him to go in. If any of these conditions were not met, it would be super hard to kill DP. He also gets Bounty, and with the U Scepter, disengages from the fight. Another great benefit of Blink Dagger U Scepter is how easy it is to set up raises to kill squishy but hard to kill heroes like Enchantress. Pay attention how Sumeo selves, he peeks to the shrine so he can get there fast enough. When he sees Enchantress, he waits her movements, and when he disengages, he uses the 
long race, then Blink stores the direction she went for and uses the other two. She's super fast, so he couldn't actually get the use, but with any other hero, he would probably get the kill. This is the first fight that Sumeo has BKB, and it's after he dies, so he doesn't have full souls when it starts. While a lot of people think that use counters the use combo because you can dodge the damage, DP will be in perfect position for a triple race after you have BKB, provided that you're not alone. Sumeo, though, hits the combo anyways, and I want to show you why. A lot of people, they engage with Blink, and they get super close on the target when they use Scepter, and in these situations, it's kind of hard to actually gauge when you have to use the Requiem. But when you're close to the max range of use Scepter cast range, the time to walk into position is pretty much perfect for you to cast and hit the enemy. Regardless, that's a kill, even though the use Scepter was there. It's also interesting to see that after the fight ends, and the only hero alive is Disruptor, Shadow Fiend does not try, and he actually prioritizes defending every single lane instead of healing. He is in no risk of dying right now, while he can make a difference defending towers and pushing waves. The reason the Use Scepter build is good this game is that Death Prophet and Lifesteal are extremely hard to man up. You can have a Daedalus, Satanic, provided the Death Prophet is on equal farm, she will have Shivas and Nocturne, and it's very hard for you to bring her down. She's also super fast, so she can kite your Satanic, especially when they're striking the enemy team, meaning that being able to explode her is very important and probably easier. For instance, in this clip, DP cancels Sumeo's TP, and pay attention how even though he dies, he brings DP with him. And you might think that this is an even trade, but that's false. DP doesn't push waves as well as SF, and doesn't farm as fast as SF. DP wants to win fights and get objectives. If she trades even like this, during the downtime of both ults, Shadowfin will be getting map control and pushing, while DP will do that, but with way less effectiveness. And you can see that as the game unfolds, the difference in farm between the two heroes gets huge. This other fight here also comes to show how good you Scepter worked out this game. As we talked about, Manta can dispel silence, track, open wounds, but you will never alt right click a lifestealer or a DP, even if you have Manta and a shit ton of other items. If you don't know, Radiance deals damage in 1 second intervals, so note that Sumeo doesn't pop the use as soon as open wounds get used, or else he would risk being hit by Lifestealer before having blink. He waits the Radiance tick and you can see it perfectly here when we slow it down, and then waits as much as possible until the right click comes to use and get out. Crispy place. The fight keeps evolving, and again we see a situation where Sumeo doesn't engage, even though he had the chance to burst someone. If Sumeo commits BKB Requiem here, he will have to fight, and possibly die before he can disengage, because of Lifestealer chasing him, and then being glanced back. He just does his best to repel Radiant, and the end result is that no high ground was lost, and Radiant doesn't feel comfortable pushing, knowing that the 3 cores are up. Well, if he goes in, he risks losing it for a chance of what? Bursting one hero? That wouldn't change the fact that they will still be outnumbered and then Shadowfin wouldn't be able to fight after that Requiem. What Radiant tries to do is Roche, but pay close attention to the fight. So Mayo clarities before following Ursa. and notice the Lifestealer gets the Aegis and also pops Rage as he trades hits with Ursa. Knowing that, and also by clicking on him and seeing that there's no Basher, he can Requiem here by blinking pretty far away from DP Silence. While Glimpse comes, it's late enough for him to burst Lifestealer by himself pretty much. As the fight unfolds, he's forced to pop KB, exploding DP, and by perfect use of the use scepter, he blinks out while dodging the impetus damage. While Sumeo dies, their push potential is over, with mid being that pushed and DP being dead. This also goes to show that use scepter is not only a means to explode bulky targets, but a way for SF to engage multiple times. Shadowfin is very squishy regardless of the build, and while he dies, Radiant had to spend quite a bit, and still the fight was dire favor. Because of the instant nature of use scepter, it also allows Sumeo to help Ursa kill Lifestealer. Lifestealer tried to push top as best as possible after that engagement, but with a quick shrine TP, Sumeo is able to to lift Lifestealer up, and even though he had Rage ready, he gets obliterated quite easily by the Ursa. When you go for the Use Scepter BKB Blink, one of the best items you have is Shadow Vice. With the 50% cooldown reduction talent, not only you will need more mana in mana region to use so many races and Requiems, the Shadow Vice itself becomes a terrifying item on the hands of Shadow Fin with so much cooldown reduction. The instant aspect of it is also great against heroes like Lifestealer, Disruptor, and even Enchantress that can pop the Nature's Attendant. This fight against Enchantress showcases the benefits of the item and how the 19 mana region per second makes Shadow Fin feel like Lina even against big waves of creeps in the lake.
With the side of ice completed though, Sumail focuses a lot in getting the level 25. The difference in power spike is huge, and he completes the item while finishing an ethereal blade on top of it. The mana region from the side of ice increases your farming potential insanely. We start seeing exactly why the level 25 talent is worth farming for. Ursa saw an invis rune here, but ignored it because he felt like he could be initiated. Knowing that, Sumail was quite aware, and thanks to a mistake from the radiant side, he easily BKB and blinks away. But that BKB is super hard to punish now, making the cooldown pretty much 30 seconds. His U Scepter also has insanely low cooldown, allowing him to dispel track multiple times in fights, or even set up a Requiem of Souls. Watch what happens seconds afterwards. Ursa gets a pick off on Disruptor, and the cooldown of Razes is so low that Shadowfin can push this huge wave in seconds while prepping the Roshan with Razes, while fighting Bounty Hunter and easily killing him while also being ready to fight. Pay attention how he blinks in the high ground and with the ethereal blade race combo almost brings fear down. He ends up falling, but since that fight is on the higher side of the map, he can easily show up, and it doesn't matter if DP has buyback. With Exorcism down, there is no play for Radiant, and they get Roshan, and they eventually also get Barracks. Okay guys, so you probably noticed that I'm mentioning my stream very often here. I'm trying my best to become a good caster, to become a good streamer, and I would love your company and feedback. And if you guys like Twitch, just drop by my stream sometime and tell me what you think. When I started here on YouTube, my videos were super garbage, and I feel like I grew a lot. Just type Miracle Juggernaut, and the first video that we will show is so cringy, but so cringe and so bad, and I feel like my stream is not as bad as that video, but I'm still growing quite a bit, and your feedback is the most important tool for me to get better. So if you're interested in what I do, if you like my work, please drop by and uh, tell me what you think. As of always, this video is sponsored by Pugna. Those guys have a huge library of videos. Pretty much every single hero tutorial is updated to 7-Eleven and there's a lot of stuff to learn and hopefully make you increase your MMR as well. The link is in the description and I'm gonna leave a poll. I'm actually interested in starting an Instagram. I'm usually not doing anything when I'm writing the script, so just posting some pictures and telling Anna, you know, I'm, I'm making a Shadowfin video. What do you guys wanna know, you know? Uh, if I actually have this communication, I can get feedback for the video as I'm making it. And I feel like that's actually pretty important. A lot of people think that Instagram is just pictures, but having that instant communication is something that I don't get that much on Twitter, just because there's so many people using it at the same time. Anyways, just tell me what you think. Thanks guys for watching, it's always a pleasure, bye.